Well, uh, let's talk about one amateur wrestler to another. We're going to talk about Paul Vachon, who died uh, at yeah. the age of 86. So the last of the wrestling side of the Vachon family, Paul the Butcher Vachon, died on February 29th. So after a period of ill health and including about with throat cancer that stopped him speaking beyond a whisper, that saw him spend the last few years of his life in a care home. So he was a true world traveller, you know, all through Asia, all through, you know, Australasia, all that kind of thing. Paul started in the business in 1957 following his brother Maurice Mad Dog Vachon into the business. He performed everywhere from the AWA, WWF, Georgia, Mid-Atlantic and beyond, as well as promoting Grand Prix Wrestling in Montreal starting in 1972. And you also tagged with him in your early days as well. So uh, there's a photo of you on, you know, just Google it. And there's a photo of you and Paul Vachon standing side by side. You've got like a sort of like mesh half see-through T-shirt going uh, going on, as was the style <laughs> at the time. Um, <clears throat> first off, where that, was that photo taken? It was taken in, ironically, you like that word, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. That's the home of AEW and the home of Tony Khan. But it was taken on the stage at the uh, Jacksonville Coliseum. Nice building. It sat right next to the stadium, I guess, that, that the Jaguars play in now, the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's the team that the Khan's uh, NFL team that they own. And uh, I was looking at the building one day, and I said, this building looks very familiar. And I'd never been in it, but it's almost the exact plan uh, of the Memphis Coliseum. Same way, except that Jacksonville had a stage and Memphis didn't have a stage. And it seats about, I don't know, 10,000, 11,000. But, and, but I, I never, of all the times that I went to Jacksonville, I never saw it sold out. I never even saw it halfway sold out. <clears throat> I don't know what the problem was there, but they must have got that Coliseum at a uh, like a at a cheap price because they couldn't they couldn't fill it up. So I remember I went to the ring there one day, uh, doing a run in, and I remember. This guy, when I went out there earlier, oh, he was up in my face and screaming, hey, you uh, cussing. And I said, hey, man, calm down. I mean, I, I ain't got a ring yet. I, I, couldn't have made you, I couldn't have made you mad. And when I left, uh, he was still screaming. But at the end of the night, we did a big run in. It was about, I don't know, six or seven guys from the dressing rooms, we all hit at different times. So the guy had his head on a swivel when he was watching who comes in. He, he comes the first guy. Oh, you, you son of a bitch. And then he's, and then another baby face runs in. Now he's expect, now he's wise. Now he's expecting the heel. Oh, here come the other heel. Oh God. And he hated me for some reason. So then they have a fighting in a ring and then he looks around and here I come. Oh boy. That's what he was waiting on. So I hit that ring and did the damage and coming out. And now everybody is standing. Everybody, they're all excited. And I come out and he's right in my face. I remember I open hand slapped that guy. I shouldn't have done it. And he, 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 was, <laughs> he went back like that. And I said, you know, and I just kept going. And I remember the next match. I just happened to look at the door and he had a cup in the aisle and he's pointing. He says, and then he saw me and went, him, he hit me in the, you see right there. And the cop was doing like this. He, man, I, I can't do nothing to him. I, you, if you want, you can go file a complaint and a warrant and we'll, we'll do something to him then. But I just can't go back and get him now just on your word. Oh my God. And he <laughs> never, never forgot me. I got a letter from him about 10 years ago. I don't know how he found my address. I should be watching that stuff. A, a dirty does not tell it with two L's at gmail.com. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, is it the physical address? The physical address he found. No, yeah, the physical address he found. He wrote a letter, the old stamped letter, and 
he explained what happened and blah, blah, blah. And I think he'd, he'd smarten up a little bit by then. He wasn't so hot, but, but at the time, <laughs> I still laugh about that every now and then. It's not really funny, but you know, it's a job guys. It's a job. So I was just doing my job. So if I had to run in there, they'd have fired me. So. <laughs> so with Paul and so I'm taking it, that photo must've been taken like mid seventies. Are we talking 74, 75, something like that? Why don't you just make me older than I am? You were very young, 12, 12, 13 at the time. <laughs> Full beard. No, I, I'll tell you what year it was. It was probably, uh, it was a centennial year. 1976, I think. 76, 77. Because then I, <clears throat> I did the worldwide tour in 78 because I was in a bunch of places and but I ended up in Tennessee and in 79, I, I did the whole year in Puerto Rico. Remember that? But then, you know, there's, there's vast t uh, amounts of my time. I don't even know where I was. They said, where were you in, I don't know, say 97. I have no idea. Tell you, I, I couldn't tell you. Puerto Rico. And, and the reason, and the reason <clears throat> I, I can't tell you is that when Vince McMahon started his big expansion and he was just driving the little mom, mom and pops territories out of business. There was nowhere literally to work unless you just worked independence, no steady place to work. So it was a tough time during the nineties. Very tough. <clears throat> give us uh, give some stories on Paul. Uh, how, how often did you no, tag with him? Uh, did you no, tag with him anywhere else? I think Paul, he just came in for a couple of months. I forgot who was there. I think Pat Patterson was there. So he, he knew Pat and he knew Jerry Briscoe. And I think he just came in for a couple of months just because he wanted to come to Florida. And I found him very, very nice man. Very nice. Easy to talk to. Didn't get excited. And if you see him and Mad Dog together, you know, they were like Mad Dog, especially. He was like, you know, he was screaming and hollering and scratching and clawing. And But Paul wasn't like that. Paul was a very intelligent man. If you, you know, sometimes in trip, people don't think this, but wrestlers get into some pretty deep conversations. And he had read quite a lot. So I learned a lot from Paul Vachon. Very nice, mm. very nice man. I didn't learn anything from wrestling. Did you ever actually wrestle him? Do I know? Yeah. <laughs> did, you actually, did you ever actually wrestle him? Or were you, all, or were you on the same no, side? Never wrestled him. I was, uh, we was all, we're always healed. We was always getting the shit beat out of us. <laughs> so, but he was a nice guy and I enjoyed being around him and my condolences to his family. <laughs>